Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcast, Episode 28, What the FAA Could Learn from the FCC. Got that coming up next. Some of you are aware that I am a licensed ham radio operator. So today I thought I'd like to spend a few moments in talking about the license procedure for getting your ham radio license versus the license procedure to get your part 107 certificate. So with the with your ham radio license, actually there are three levels of licenses that you can get. Now the first is, it's called the technician license and there's a 35 questions on that exam and when you pass that you'd be able to talk to amateur radio on amateur radio frequencies above 30 megahertz now this the second test is what's called the general license and that's 35 questions again and you you get more responsibilities and privileges to operate a, a lot more on the bands and now the last test is called the amateur extra and that is uh, 50 questions and when you pass that you are able to talk on all bands and all modes available to U.S. amateur radio in the United States. Now, the cost for each one of these exams is $15. And these exams are given, they're not online. They are at, usually, they're held by a local ham radio organization. And two of them I took at public libraries, and one of them I took at a church. And again, the cost for each, uh, each of these is $15. This. The license lasts for a period of 10 years, and the cost to renew the license is $0. It does not cost you anything. You can do it 90 days before your license expires. So in 2025, uh, 90 days before my license expires, I'm going to fill out the paperwork online and get that taken care of to renew my amateur extra license. I do have the highest level of license available to U.S. Amateur Radio. Now, what's interesting with this is, is I used a great online system to study for this. There are a lot of books and a lot of information to study for this. I used a great system because what it did was it gave you practice, practice exams, but it mixed the questions up. From, there's a pool of questions that are available for each exam. It's, it's different than the FAA, and they switch these questions out frequently. So, you know, you, you don't really know what's good. You, you have an idea of, of the pool of questions that will be asked on the exam, basically is what I'm saying here. So, in, in what this, what this uh, the online study method that I used, it rotated the questions as well. So, it was very easy for me to use this, and it, was, and, and it made taking, taking these tests very easy. And it's also, you gain a lot of knowledge because the, the questions don't repeat themselves and, and they vary, but they are actual questions that are on the exam. Okay, so this, this covers what the, how the FCC runs this. Now, most of you are familiar with the Part 107, and, but I'm just going to go touch on this briefly here. Now, you, you do know the initial Part 107 exam consists of 60 questions and it is $150. And once you pass that, you have to have, have a score of 70% or above to pass that. And once you do that, your license is good for 24 months. Now, when it comes time to renew, you, do, you have to take what's called a recurrent exam. Now, there's only 40 questions on the recurrent exam, but again, that is $150 to do that. And then your recurrent exam license lasts for an additional two years. So every two years, you have to pay $150 to get to get uh, maintain your part one part one hundred seven license. So with all this being said, Bill, you know what you know why are you saying what can the FAA learn from the FCC? Well, I think the FCC is very organized. They've had this down pat and they've done this for a while. You know, um, you know, you know, a lot of people say cut the FAA a little bit of slack. Well, that's true. The, you know, dr drones are something that are very new. Um, you know, within the past let's say five years or so. But one of the things I think the FAA can take to heart from the FCC is, is the license process for this, okay? Um, you know, I'm not saying cut the cost down to $15, but I'm saying, you know, make it reasonable. $150 is a lot of money, number one. And number two, expand the period that the license is good for. Instead of two years, I think every four or four years would be appropriate for something like this. Now, I know, again, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, you're talking ham radio, 
and you're talking being able to fly and it could cause damage and everything. One of the things that I want to let people know about with ham radio especially, for example, if I set an antenna up in my yard, uh, one of the things is radiation. You know, um, radio antennas give off radio waves and it is considered technically radiation. And you have to be very careful. You have to tune these things uh, and fine tune them well enough so you're not you're not causing any any radiation to you or to your neighbor any harm. Um, you know, in, in a lot of instances, a lot of people what they do is you know, because they live in a uh, in a planned development and planned developments usually don't allow for antennas. What they do in that instance is they have a they have what's called field antennas that you can set up while you're talking and then bring it back in, in the house for the day when you do something like that. So there is some responsibility in, in terms of knowing, not only that, your electronics. Um, you, you, have to, you have to be very knowledgeable in terms of, you know, a lot of parts of the tests that you take involve, you know, your knowledge, uh, electronics diagrams. You know, it's, it's something that you do need to understand and do need to have a knowledge of. And I keep I keep myself up on it. I think one of the things that's really helped me quite a bit, believe it or not, is YouTube. And there are some fantastic guys out there on YouTube. I mean, we have some great uh, drone guys. There are some fa fantastic guys on doing ham radio. And, and I really, there's several that I follow that just absolutely have it spot on and that they nail it. And it's excellent. And one of the reasons, just to, I'm just going to backtrack here just a tad and then, then we'll, we'll finish up here. One of the reasons that I got my ham radio license was because of living in the state of Florida. You know, we're faced with, you know, we're the second most disaster prone state in the United States. And of course, you know, we face hurricanes. Um, got our taste of one two years ago with, when Irma came through. And then we were very fortunate recently with Dorian. And, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with all those who were affected by Hurricane Dorian. It was a devastating storm. And this is why I ended up getting this, to be able to have an alternate form of communication should cell phones go down, should, you know, landlines go down. There was a way to be able to communicate as if, if needed to be. I am going to get back into ham radio and I'm going to going to dive in with both feet because I think it's important, number one, that we have alternate communications. And number two, there's some great organizations in the local area to become a part of. One of the nice things also about ham radio is they have what's called Elmers. Now, it's not a specific, it's not in a name of a person, but what it is, is it's referred to as someone who has had quite a bit of experience in ham radio, helping out someone who doesn't have quite a bit of experience in ham radio. So, you know, and, and I do see a lot of that on YouTube as far as the drone in the drone community. And I think that's great. So what does all this mean? What does all this boil down to, Bill? Well, um, you know, first of all, you know, again, you know, the FAA in terms of the UAS sector is something that's relatively new. It hasn't been around a long time. OK, I do understand that. But I think they can take to heart what the FCC has done in terms of, you know, licensing and prices and time between licenses. Now, you know, the responsibility obviously is greater for drone pilots than there are for ham radio operators. And I think it's important that, that it be more frequent. However, I, I think two years is too soon. I think you should look at something. I think it should be doubled. I think it should be every four years. And I think they also need to look at the cost of this too. I think $150 is, 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 is too much. I think it, you should be looking anywhere from $50 to $75 to take this exam. Now, look, you know, um, you know, to take it cost me a total of forty five dollars to take all three of these exams. Now, granted, it also cost me more in terms of the study. You know, using that online study system that I used to take that. I, uh, you know, I believe that was probably at least a hundred dollars to do that. That was that was invaluable. And there are a lot of great online Part One Hundred Seven study systems out there. So this is what this is. These are some thoughts that I have on what the FAA can learn from the FCC. I hope they do. They are evolving. They're growing. And I think what's nice is they do reach out a lot to the drone community. And, they, and I would strongly encourage everyone to take advantage of these opportunities when they present themselves. They did this very recently. So that's something that I, I would highly recommend that everybody take a look into. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, it's a great day to fly. Take care, everyone.